If you look at the top of the page, it says to recall that equation has no solution. It's in bold if the ending statement is not true. From a previous unit, I don't remember which unit it was, and this was also on the last algebra set. Say we have not a system, but let's go back to something we've already done. So say the equation was 2x plus 4 equals 2x minus 1. To solve, you could cancel out the x's, right, or subtract them from both sides, and you end up with a statement that says 4 equals negative 1. Is that equal? No. And from the unit that we covered previously, I don't remember what unit it was, this type of equation had no solution. Same thing with a system. If you come out with a statement that's not true, there's going to be no solution. The second sentence says an equation has infinitely many solutions if the equations are both the same. So back in that unit, okay, looking at an equation that's not a system, if this was 2x minus 3 equals 2x minus 3, the 2x's cancel, you get negative 3 equals negative 3. That's a true statement, right? And back at the beginning of the year, that answer was infinitely many. Do you remember the name for that in that unit? It began with an I. So this was infinitely many. Gabe? Identity. It was an identity. We're going to see the same type of scenario happening. Here we didn't have equations, but when the expressions are the same, we end up with infinitely many solutions. So in a system, when the statement comes out to be true, or the equations are the exact same equation, we're going to have infinitely many solutions. So that was the answer there. When it comes out to an unequal statement, or a false statement, All right, when it was not equal, we had no solution. Okay, so let's take a look at the first two examples. Now we're in a system, okay? So solve each of the following systems algebraically, so by hand, not using a calculator, using substitution or elimination. Number one, let's first discuss, would you use substitution or elimination to solve number one? H.A.? One would be elimination. What about number two? Would you use substitution or elimination for two? Elimination. So we don't have one that's substitution because we don't have an x equals or y equals. So in this one here, when you solve it and you multiply this one by a negative two, okay, let's bring down the first equation, 16x minus 8y equals 16. Distributing this all the way through, we end up with negative 16x plus 8y equals negative 16. When you add those together, what do you get? This becomes 0, this becomes 0, and this becomes 0. 0 equals 0, which is true. Okay, that's a true statement. So do we have infinitely many or no solution? Infinitely many. These are the exact same equation. If above, instead of multiplying this by negative 2, we just doubled it, we would have gotten 16x minus 8y equals 16. And you can see that they're the exact same equation. Okay? So if you notice that in the beginning, okay, you can just show what I have in orange and then state the answer. Or you can go ahead and solve it as a system, and then if it's equal, it's infinitely many, and then if it's not, it's no solution. So number two, how would we eliminate x or y in number two? Jack? We would times it by, by, we would times the top one by two. Yes. So times the top one by two. I'm going to, instead of rewriting both, I'm just going to put that equation underneath this one since we didn't change. So multiplying it by two, we have negative 20x plus 20y equals 0. And multiplying it by 2, did I end up with a coefficient that was 
um, the same but opposite signs for either the x term or y term. We have negative 20, negative 20. So let's multiply by a negative 2. Yeah, so that would change this to a positive 20. It would change the symbol here to a negative. And then 0 times anything is still 0. Now these cancel out, okay? What happens here? They cancel out, which will really get 0. They're adding to 0. And then 20 plus 0 is 20. Is that a true statement? No, it doesn't equal, so the answer is no solution. This one. So in continuing to solve more word problems today, it says sometimes our word problems are separated into multiple steps, which is what you would see in a regions on a short answer question. You would still follow the same steps, so we always read it carefully, translate, write our let statements, solve it, and then check to make sure it makes sense. Okay, so number one, we have two cell phone plans and they offer different texting packages. The two plans are outlined below. So we have plan A and plan B. Plan A charges $5 per month and then it has a five cent per text charge. Plan B has no uh, per month charge but it's going to charge you 10 cents per text. Is there a certain number of texts when the two plans cost the same amount for one month? Determine your answer by setting up a system of equations that model the two plans. So what are the variables? So take a minute with the person next to you to come up with your two let statements. So looking at the question right here, Okay, is there a certain number of texts? So more or less you're looking for the number of texts, okay, where your bills would, or your two plans would cost the same. So let's let T equal the number of texts. You can use X and Y. And then what would the other variable be? Lauren? Yeah. So let's say C equals the monthly cost. Okay, so for plan A, what would be the equation? Plan A, plan B. The monthly cost C is going to be, we have a $5 monthly charge plus this five cents per text. Per is math, is what math operation? Five cents per multiplication. Okay, so five cents per text, so every text that you send, so 0 0.05 times T. Plan B, it says we're gonna charge no per month charge. Okay, but you're going to get charged 10 cents per text, so twice as much. So 0.1, so actually C equals 0 0.10 times T. It wants the number of texts where the plans cost the same amount. Okay, so that would mean setting the two um, costs equal to each other. But if you were just going to solve this system, they're both in the form C equals, so you would use elimination or substitution? Substitution. So let's replace, we'll take this and replace the C with the 0 0.10T. But cost the same, we want the cost equal anyway. So 0 0.10T equals um, 5 plus 0 0.05T. When all the t's on the same side so that we can combine like terms, so I'm going to subtract 0.05t from 0.10t and what do we get? 0.05t equals 5. Divide by 0.05 and t is going to equal 0.05. Nope. Nope. 
So to answer the question, um, the two plans um, cost the same amount for 100 techs. Okay, so number two, it says you have an animal shelter that spends $2.35 per day to care for each cat and five fifty per day to care for each dog. Pat noticed that the shelter spent $89.50 caring for the cats and dogs on Wednesday. The first part says to write an equation to represent the possible number of cats and dogs that could have been at the shelter on Wednesday. So when you think of the equation, you should be thinking y equals mx plus b, or thinking your function rule, and it's going to represent the possible number of cats and dogs. So let's let c equal the number of cats, and let d equal the number of dogs. So we're right at representing the equation for the no possible number of cats and dogs at the shelter on Wednesday. So for Pat, again, he noticed that the shelter uh, spent a total of $89.50. They spent $2.35 per day to care for a cat and $5.50 to care for a dog. What's the equation? Gabe? That is correct. The second part of that question says that Pat said that there might have been eight cats and 14 dogs at the shelter on Wednesday, so he's not quite sure. There might have been eight cats and 14 dogs. Are his numbers possible? So think of this, eight cats in reviewing for the quiz and 14 dogs as a point, so eight comma 14. How do you determine whether a point is a solution to an equation or if this actually makes sense for this problem? Sarah? Plug it in. So is 2.35 times 8 plus 550 times 14, does that give you 89.50 is the question. So in simplifying the left, $2.35 times 8 is $18.80. And then 14 times 550 is $77, which gives you a total of 95.8. So $95.80, which is not equal to $89.50. So the answer is no. Don't forget to answer yes or no. And I just want to let you know, too, justify your answer is just the math. You don't need to explain in detail. So when you do all that calculation, you're justifying your answer. Last part. Later, Pat found a record showing that there were a total of 22 cats and dogs at the shelter on Wednesday. So with that second piece of information, we can determine the exact number of cats and dogs. So this equation, a total of 22 cats and dogs, let's write our one equation from above, 2.35c plus 5.5d equals 89.50. This equation for a total, Sarah? C plus D equals 22. The question says, how many cats were at the shelter? So we don't have to solve for D, so don't do more work than you have to. We need to do what with D to find C? Eliminate it. So if I want to eliminate D, what would we multiply this equation by? 5.5 NA negative so that it has the opposite sign. So bring down the 2.35C plus 5.5D equals 89.50. Multiply each term 
by negative 5.5. So we'll get negative 5.5c minus 5.5d equals negative 121. Now add them together. Those become zero. $2.35, you need 15 more cents to give you 250, and then another $3. So this is negative $3.15 times C equals negative 31.50. Bless you. <laughs> Divide by negative 3.15. And we get C equals ten. Good. So how many cats? There were ten cats at the shelter on Wednesday.